Okay, let's uh, let's unpack this. Imagine looking at your weather radar. Yeah. Right? Hoping for rain, maybe. And instead, bam, you see this gigantic, perfectly circular, well, donut spanning entire countries. Yeah. Not just one either, but multiple appearing like out of nowhere. That's exactly what happened recently, and it really sent the internet into a bit of a frenzy. Oh, it absolutely did. That yeah. X post, I think the user was at B Gates Eyes of And look, we're just reporting the source here, not yeah. you know endorsing the handle or anything implied. Yeah, right, just the source. Posted August 19, 2025, uh, Aero 9.48 UTC. That's what, 4.48 p.m. Jakarta time. It really caught everyone's attention, and the images were... Well, they were striking. Definitely. One huge ring over the Balkans, Hungary, Serbia, Romania, places like that. And another one, get this, 125 miles wide over Fort Wayne, Indiana. Wow. And the original post, it actually said something like, no one can explain what's causing them, which, you know, just uh, poured gasoline on the fire. People were genuinely baffled. And the theories just flew, didn't they? Yeah. Faster than the donuts themselves. Everything from, like, massive geoengineering projects to, okay, this one's wild, portals to hollow earth. It's fascinating, isn't it, how quickly we jump to the really extraordinary stuff when something's unexplained. Ugly. And that's precisely why we're doing this deep dive today. Yeah, our mission here is really to cut through all that noise. Prayer. We're going to unpack these you know, mysterious anomalies using actual scientific data, some historical context, technical analysis, mm -hmm. basically give you, the listener, a shortcut, a way to get truly well-informed about this whole thing, help you separate the fact from the uh, the wilder speculation. And maybe reveal some surprising things about our world and, you know, how we see information, too. Not exactly. What's really interesting here is that the most plausible scientific explanation for these, these donut anomalies, it isn't alien portals. It's not secret weather weapons. It's actually something much more natural and, in its own way, kind of beautiful. Okay. What meteorologists call roost rings. Roost rings. <sighs> okay, that sounds... <laughs> Way less sci-fi than some other theories floating around. So yeah. uh, for anyone who hasn't heard that term, what exactly is a roost ring? So they happen when Doppler radar, the same radar used for weather, detects these incredibly large flocks of birds. Birds. Yeah, birds taking off or landing, usually all at once. It typically happens at very specific times, like dawn or dusk. And it's not new. We've seen this before. There was a famous example, August 11, 2010, over Green Bay, Wisconsin, birds leaving Green Island. The radar caught this huge coordinated exodus, basically, and that created this distinct ring shape. Okay, so the radar isn't just picking up like a few scattered birds here and there. It's literally thousands, maybe millions, all moving together. And that's what makes it the donut shape. That's the key. The radar beam is incredibly sensitive. It can pick up things as small as birds. So when these birds launch from or maybe come back to a central roosting spot, right. they move out radially, you know, in all directions. Right, outwards. Or inwards, depending. And the radar catches this synchronized movement. Because they're all starting from or heading to roughly the same central point, it forms that unique circular pattern. It's like an aerial snapshot of a mass bird movement. Okay, okay. And if we apply that logic to the Serbia anomaly, yeah. that was August 14th, 2025. Yeah. You mentioned it lines up with the Serbian Hydrometeorological Service data. Mm -hmm. Once you adjust for the time zone, yeah, UTC plus two. Right. So that would suggest a really, really massive bird roost, wouldn't it? It really does. I mean, given the scale we saw on the radar image, it strongly points to a huge communal roost. Could be migratory species, maybe getting ready for their autumn journey. In Indiana, same logic. Pretty much. The Indiana ring centered near Fort Wayne that falls smack dab in a known bird migration corridor in the Midwest. You get species like the American robin, European starling. They gather in enormous numbers there. Huh. And the National Weather Service, they even did a study back in 2019. They noted that these roost wings, they're seasonal, they're location specific. They often pop up in the same places year after year. By 125 miles wide for that Indiana ring. Right. That's just, that's enormous. Does that yeah. still fit within what we call like natural variability for birds? It, it is exceptionally large, yeah, no doubt. Yeah. But it's not totally outside the realm of possibility. Uh -huh. A diameter like that could mean an exceptionally big, dense flock, or maybe it's amplified by the radar's sensitivity, especially at longer ranges, or you could even have multiple roosts kind of close together overlapping on the radar display. Oh, okay. Multiple roosts merging visually. Exactly. So while it's impressive, it's still within what nature and radar technology can produce together. Okay. But I can hear some listeners thinking, you know, couldn't this just be a glitch, some weird radar artifact? 
That's a totally fair question. And yes, radar systems can sometimes produce circular patterns. We call them artifacts or sometimes clutter. Right. As you know, Doppler radar works by sending out radio waves and listening for what bounces back from rain, hail, birds, bugs, anything in the air, really. Mm -hmm. And the way the radar scans it uses these things called volume coverage patterns, VCPs, like VCP-21 is a common one. It sweeps the antenna at different angles. Sometimes that scanning process itself can create concentric rings, like a digital echo. And wasn't there something about a bright band effect, too, like melting snow? You're absolutely right. Lake Erie weather had a good explanation of that. You can get narrow rings sometimes, maybe from higher angle scans hitting that melting layer, the bright band. Okay. But for these specific cases, Serbia and Indiana, the patterns were just too robust. Two clearly showed that radial movement, the forming and dissipating over time, things really consistent with living organisms moving. So not just a static glitch. Exactly. The scale, the movement, the timing it all points much more strongly towards a biological origin, the birds, rather than just an instrument issue. Okay, so birds seem like the prime suspect. But even with a solid scientific explanation like roost rings, why do so many people immediately jump to geoengineering? It feels like that idea has some deep roots, doesn't it? It really does. That immediate leap you saw on social media wasn't random. It taps into this long, kind of fascinating history of humans trying to mess with the weather. Ah, weather modification. Exactly. It's been around a while. One of the most, let's say, notable early U.S. efforts was Operation Popeye. Popeye. Like the sailor. Yeah. Weird name, right? But it ran from 1967 to 1972 during the Vietnam War. The U.S. military was actually using cloud seeding, dropping silver iodide into clouds, trying to make the monsoon season last longer over the Ho Chi Minh Trail. Seriously? To disrupt supply lines? That was the idea. Declassified reports later claimed it boosted rainfall by maybe 30% in the target zones. Whether it actually works strategically is debated, but wow. it was a big deal. And it definitely raised some serious ethical and environmental questions about, you know, humans playing God with the weather, questions we still talk about. Military weather control back in the 60s and 70s, that's yeah. kind of staggering. I guess Popeye wasn't the only project like that. Oh, not at all. There was also Project Cirrus, even earlier, 1947 to 1952. That was General Electric. They were also playing with silver iodide, trying to make snowstorms, even trying to steer hurricanes. Steer hurricanes. Did it work? Well, there was a lot of controversy, especially around Hurricane King in 1947. After they seeded it, it took this unexpected turn. Some people blamed the seeding, but honestly, proving direct cause and effect was basically impossible back then. Hmm. But these early experiments definitely got people interested and led to more formal research. Like Dr. Irving Langmuir, he did the first really scientifically watched cloud seeding trial in 1948 down in New Mexico, reported he successfully made it rain. So, okay, weather modification is a real thing. It has a history. Does it still happen today? Yes, absolutely. The U.S. National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, NOAA, they've actually kept records of weather modification projects since 1971. There's a law, Public Law 92-205. Hmm. Modern efforts, though, they mostly focus on cloud seeding to try and boost rain or snow, especially in places prone to drought. It's a very different scale, a different intent than what some of these wilder theories were suggesting online. Right, which brings us back to those ex posts, like the ones from at that Fadelman and at Kaiser, immediately jumping to geoengineering or microwave weather modification and linking it to HARP or Harvard's Scopex project. Mm -hmm. And then others, like at Shroomy's XRP, took it even further, suggesting this whole profit motive behind disasters, kind of echoing that movie Geostorm. Okay, so what's the actual scientific rebuttal to those kinds of claims? Because they sound pretty dramatic. They do. And the rebuttal is pretty clear, honestly. NOAA, just this year, 2025, stated very emphatically that the technology simply does not exist for large-scale weather control. You know, sure. steering hurricanes, creating massive storms out of nowhere. So, impossible tech-wise. According to NOAA, yes. There's just no peer-reviewed scientific evidence supporting these kinds of conspiracy theories. None. What about HARP, then? That name comes up constantly in these contexts. Yeah, HARP gets blamed for everything, it seems. The High Frequency Active Auroral Research Program, it is a real facility up in Alaska, but it's basically a powerful radio transmitter. Its job is ionospheric research studying the upper atmosphere. So not weather control. Absolutely no capability to modify weather patterns on the kind of scale people are talking about. Not even close. You know, NOAA looked at Hurricane Celine and Knowlton earlier this year. Yeah. Their analysis found zero link to any kind of geoengineering. Their intensity was completely down to natural climate factors. Okay. 
and the the portal to hollow earth comment from at momologues yeah that felt a bit like satire maybe. it definitely seemed hug and cheek but even as a joke it kind of reflects that human tendency doesn't it right. to reach for these really out there explanations when something looks weird yeah it's not a new thing either historically people have tried weird stuff yeah robert dyronforth back in 1891 tried setting off gunpowder explosions in texas to make it rain gunpowder did it work <laughs> nope not at all met with a lot of skepticism unsurprisingly right what is encouraging, though, is seeing how platforms like X can also be used to correct misinformation pretty quickly sometimes. Absolutely. That Mexico case you mentioned, referenced in some earlier posts, that was a good example. Mm -hmm. It started as a mystery, this weird radar blob, but it got resolved pretty fast as just a standard Doppler radar range test. A meteorologist, Andrew Fryden, and another user at the BOS 46, they confirmed it. And the Community Notes feature on X helped spread that correct information. Yeah, the Community Notes can be really useful. It shows that even though speculation spreads fast, verified info can catch up, which is good. Okay, so let's dive just a bit deeper into the radar data itself. What specifically supports the roostering idea? You mentioned the Serbia image timestamp, August 14th, 0, 0.000 UTC, and that play animation feature. Yes, that animation feature is crucial if you're looking at these radar loops online. It shows a time lapse. You actually see the ring forming and then dissipating over a few hours. Ah, so it moves, it yeah. changes. Exactly. That dynamic pattern appearing, spreading out, fading away is totally consistent with a massive flock of birds taking off around dawn and then dispersing. It's not just a static circle that sits there, which helps rule out a simple glitch or artifact. Okay. And the Indiana image. Yeah. The one where you could see the highways like I-69, I-90. That one looked more like a snapshot, right? Yeah. Probably caught during the peak activity, maybe the main wave of birds taking off or landing. And the colors are important too. The greens and reds. Yeah, those color gradients show radar reflectivity. Higher values, the reds and yellows, mean denser targets. Consistent with tens, maybe hundreds of thousands of birds packed together, not spread out stuff like light rain. But you did mention radar limitation. Yeah. And that 125-mile diameter in Indiana. Yeah. It still feels huge, even for overlapping roosts. It does. And while typical roost rings are often more like 20 to 50 miles across, the NEXRAD system, that's the network of Doppler radars we use, been around since the 90s, it can misinterpret non-weather targets. That's the clutter we talked about. Mm. But for something 125 miles wide, yeah, you're likely talking about incredibly large, dense flocks maybe multiple huge flocks overlapping, or maybe some unique effect of the radar beams spreading out at that very long range, capturing a wider area of activity. It's pushing the limits, but it's still within the realm of what natural bird behavior plus radar physics can potentially create. This whole thing, it really does highlight that intersection, doesn't it? Technology, nature, mm -hmm. how we perceive things. Makes you wonder why we're seeing maybe more of these now or why they're getting so much attention. It really does. And roost rings themselves aren't new. Meteorologists have known about them for ages, but they're increased visibility globally in 2025. That's probably not just random. So what's driving it? Well, could be a few things coming together. Our radars are getting better, more sensitive, but also maybe changes in the environment. Like climate change could be shifting bird migration patterns or changing where they find suitable places to roost in such large numbers. That might make these events more pronounced or happen in new places. And of course, social media. It acts like this giant instant magnifying glass. Every weird blip on a radar screen has the potential to go viral now. Exactly. It's that combination. Better tech, potentially changing natural patterns, and this instant global audience. It gives us this new, sometimes confusing lens to see nature through. So could climate change actually be making these roosts bigger or more frequent? Is that a real possibility? It's certainly a plausible hypothesis, something that really needs more research. Looking at long-term radar data alongside bird population studies, migration tracking, connecting those dots. So what does this mean looking forward? How do we handle the next weird radar donut or whatever phenomenon pops up and gets misinterpreted online? Well, it really underscores the need for integrating different kinds of data, like you said, radar, satellite imagery, actual bird counts, getting a fuller picture. And critically, I think it points to the need for proactive public education. Imagine if agencies like NOAA or maybe even AI companies like XAI could use platforms like X more effectively, like using those community note features or similar tools to get verified explanations out there fast in real time. So when people see something weird and ask, what is that? Right. 
there's a quick, reliable answer readily available. Exactly. Meet that curiosity with understanding, not let speculation run wild for days. Okay, so let's just recap this deep dive then. These mysterious donut anomalies that blew up online. Overwhelmingly likely, they're spectacular, naturally occurring roost ranks caused by huge flocks of birds. Mm -hmm. And the meteorological evidence, the historical radar studies, they all really back that up pretty solidly. And while weather modification is real, it has a history, Operation Popeye, modern cloud seeding. Absolutely, documented history. But there is just no credible evidence, zero, linking these specific radar rings to big geoengineering schemes or things like HARP. None whatsoever. The mystery really as of, what, 6.39 p.m. Jakarta time on August 19th, 2025, it's pretty much solved using natural science and understanding our technology. Right. But it does leave us with a final thought, doesn't it? Something maybe for you, the listener, to mull over. How does this rapid-fire spread of information on social media mixed with our, you know, innate human desire to find amazing, extraordinary explanations? Yeah. How does that shape how we understand the world around us? Yeah, even when the actual truth, millions of birds creating a giant radar pattern is pretty astonishing in its own right. Totally. What other everyday things, maybe hiding in plain sight, might we be completely misinterpreting? 